The fictitious Rock High School is undersubscribed, struggling and getting negative coverage in the local press. The new head wants to improve the school's reputation, but faces a daunting task. Unruly students, errant staff and crafty journalists seem determined to give him a hard time. We've asked a group of real school staff, journalists and experts to take part in these imaginary scenarios in order to show you how to handle a media crisis. It's an autumn afternoon when a local journalist picks up the phone to the teacher who's in charge of the school's PR. Hello, Rock High School, Jeff Shepherd speaking. Oh, Jeff, my name's Richard Brock. I'm from the, uh, the Rock Record. I think we've spoken once or twice. Yes, we've met once before, I believe, haven't we? Listen, um... Somebody's come to, to the paper with a bit of a complaint involving some of your pupils. Uh, it's an elderly lady and apparently she was bombarded with eggs while she was in her car. Good gracious. Have you heard about this one? I've not heard anything of this at all, I'm afraid. Not the sort of thing we want to be associated with at all, is it? So as far as punishments go, if, if they're, they're caught... What can we expect here? There'll be a letter home. We'd have their parents in. And we'd discuss it with them, but almost certainly the more serious offences would be uh, some form of external exclusion. Lovely. All right, Jeff, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Not at all, thank you. Better get to the head on this one. But before Jeff can alert the new head, our intrepid newshound is back on the phone. Could you give me the details of this um, person, please? It's Mrs Kemp, um, Dorset Road. Well, obviously, what we want to do is to get her into school to look at our um, photographs on our system so we can identify the children that have done this. We take very seriously indeed how children behave on their way to and from school and always work with neighbours when anything goes wrong. Is this the first you've heard of such an incident? It's the first I've heard of this incident, yes. You said the first you've heard of this incident. Presumably there have been others. Yet. Well, please don't try and put words into my mouth. Every time we have an issue raised by a neighbour, we follow it up. And of course that does happen from time to time because children don't always behave. Has anyone a wish on the way to and from school? OK, just a final thing, what sort of sanctions are we looking at? Is this a, an expulsion? Perhaps the best sanction we could apply would be if Miss Kemp's agreeable, then we would like to involve her in one aspect of the community service sanction that I have in mind, which is some very hard work in her garden. Great. Mr Hare, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. With a looming open day designed to persuade parents to choose his undersubscribed school, Philip needs his PR team to launch a damage limitation exercise. What, what, what line did you take with him about it? That we would investigate the incident um, swiftly to ascertain, A, was it our students? If it was, then we need to identify them quickly. Yeah, I went slightly further than that. I said we try and persuade her to agree as part of the sanction that they do a community service in her garden or something of that right. nature. Yeah. Have you got time to go round to see Miss Kemp today sometime, Jeff? Yes, I have, I have a meeting after school, which um, I'm running, but I'll, I'll be able to get around there about six o'clock. Well, this is a, a measure of your charm offensive ability, isn't it? It is indeed. I mean, if we can manage her really well, I mean, she might be open to writing a letter to the press to say how well this has been dealt with. Let's hope we can turn this, with her, from a negative into a positive. It's important we do, and I'll do my best for it. Well, OK, good luck. Beleaguered by misbehaving pupils and a hostile press, Philip sensibly opts to get some legal advice. The important thing for the reputation of the school is the way that the school deals with the incidents. Parents out there, the community, want to know that the school is going to respond in an adequate and proper way to any kind of story that, that arises of this kind. With this in mind, the Chair of Governors comes in to talk to the head. They're both keen to avoid the school's name being dragged through the mud. We've had two, one to me and one to Jeff, and neither of us was told about the other, calls from a rather aggressive local journalist following a complaint from a resident about some kids throwing eggs at her car. Right. Now we've done everything we can to contain the incident. 
sorting out the, the, the resident and, and sanctions of the students, but the journalists seemed determined to see this as one of a series of, of things going wrong with our children out of school and wasn't very interested when I said that wasn't the case. Have you thought about letting reception know so that uh, the reporters' phone calls are always put through to you directly? No, I haven't. Now, that's a really good idea. I'll get that done as soon as we finish talking. We're going to see if we can get this lady who suffered the eggs to write a letter saying to the paper how nicely we dealt with it, whether she'll do that or not, we don't know. And uh, we are going to use this week's weekly newsletter to reiterate the, our expectations about how children behave on the way to and from school and the cooperation we're seeking from parents. So at least we'll have those things in place before the open evening. So the key things to remember are that when an incident comes out of the blue and you have to deal with it retrospectively, designate a single spokesperson and have a clear message prepared in case the journalist rings back about either this or other stories. Two months pass and some of Rock's pupils are again causing trouble locally. They, you see, they have any power sonic AA batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just see it? Yeah. Which one you want, sir? Let me just see them. Yeah. Think about it. You sure? Young science teacher Alex Smith spots incriminating evidence of his pupils' shoplifting activities posted on the web by one of the perpetrators. Eureka! MySpace and Facebook are often my best source of information on some of my pupils. Well, usually I use it to remind them to hand in their homework, but this I'll have to share with their head. Jeff, come in. Knowing that the shoplifting incident may soon reach the press, Philip discusses with his PR team strategies to placate the shopkeeper and counter any potential negative publicity. When we dealt with the man of the shop and the shoplifting yesterday, which yes. you did a great job on, Jeff, thank you, the shopkeeper was initially saying he was going to go to the press because he was absolutely sick and tired of our kids. And I suspect if this gets to our... Um, rather hostile Richard Brock, he'll, he'll spin it for all he's oh, worth. Sure. So we've identified yeah. the children, we've punished them, we've done exclusions, and their parents have agreed to pay for the cost of the they goods. Have, they were very helpful. And we've also promised him that we'll get somebody up as part of our after-school patrol, we'll pop into the shop daily. Yes. So, I mean, hopefully he won't go to the press, but if he does, we need to be prepared. Now, I think right. that... Um, We've got this problem with the most local paper being very negative about us at the moment. I know what else we could do. The council has a monthly um, magazine they deliver to every household, doesn't it? Mm. They will certainly want to be putting good news because they believe we're turning the school round, the drama things we run for yeah. primary schools. We're opening up more and more to the community. Um, but also what we're doing with the Neighbourhood Watch Group, how we've got those very much getting us to help set high standards on the way to and from school. That could be a, a very positive message. Yeah, we need to be proactive and get us out, remind the community of all the good work we've been doing, the strides that we've been making over the last couple of years. You see, in 18 months' time, Richard Brock won't want to give us bad publicity because it'll sell papers more to, to do good stuff about a good school, but whilst he can sell papers by knocking us, we're an easy target, and that's, that's what we have to change. Attack being the best form of defence, Phil? It's not attack, it's, um, <laughs> it's giving, putting our best face forward. Absolutely. Hello, Filippo here. Mr. O here, it's Richard Brock uh, again from the Rock Record. Oh, hello, I think we spoke hello. a while ago. We did. Um, More bad news, I'm afraid. We've had a complaint from a news agent about theft. Yes, we, we've, we've um, dealt with that with the police and with the parents of the children involved. They've made reparations and they've served um, serious school sanctions. OK, what are those sanctions, please? That's, that's really a matter for the school and the parents of the children concerned. I don't think that... Um, 
it's a matter that I should talk about in public. Do you not think it would be helpful to the people who live close to the school to know just what sort of sanctions you're putting in place, whether the pupils well, are truly being pu punished? I'm quite happy to talk to the neighbours. Well, you can't do them through us. Uh, not through the press. The way that we've developed to talk with the neighbours, and you might be quite interested in this as a news story, is we've just um, offered, and it's been agreed, to host the meetings of the local neighbourhood watch in the school. And there's a meeting coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Which I will be attending. I'm very much looking forward to that. We've got the name Lola as well, one of the you might uh, have offenders. A name. I'm not going to comment about individual children. I've made that very clear. You should know quite well what the rules are around that. And I will take that up, if necessary, with your editor and with the press complaints people. OK. Thanks so much, Mr O'Hare. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Consider being proactive and find good outcomes from potentially damaging events before the media ring. Never lie, but try to make a positive out of a negative by refocusing the journalist's attention on success stories. It's a winter's day and science teacher Alex Smith is driving home when he spots Lola, a year 10 pupil. She's just missed her bus and he's concerned for her safety. I'll give you a lift? Yeah. yeah. You live in a rocker state, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll go that way anyway, so. Thanks. Too much trouble. What are you up to? Nothing much. No? No. Have you started studying? Yeah. You owe me some homework, I think, as well. Mm. Mm. Having too much fun, I imagine. Just here, yeah? Yeah. This is where you live, I see. Mm hmm. <laughs> here, okay? Yeah. Sadly, Lola views this car journey in a very different light, as she reveals to her form teacher, Miss Jones. Miss, can I speak to you? Of course. I was waiting for the bus, and Sir came by in his car and offered me a lift. I'll give you a lift? Yeah. yeah. You live in Rocker State, don't you? Yeah. yeah well, go that way anyway, so. I was pleased because my friend really fancies him and I thought she would be so jealous. Is that a good day? Yeah. But then he started brushing my thigh with his hand when he was making unnecessary gear changes and asking me personal questions. Having too much fun, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Going out too much, eh? Hey? Yeah. And then when he dropped me off, he leaned right across me and touched both my thigh and my tits. I'm afraid I really can't keep that to myself. I'm, I'm going to have to speak to the head about that, but I will find you someone to talk to, OK? Faced with this serious allegation, the head immediately alerts his local authority press officer, who will be handling this incident from now on. The first thing we'd like the school to do would be to contact us in the first instant. We would act as the intermediary between the school and the local paper. Um, we'd obviously like to you know, make sure that we put together a short holding statement that didn't um, imply any implication of guilt or otherwise, because obviously there'd need to be an investigation carried out. Um, we would also um, recommend to the journalists that they may need to check with their legal department whether or not, in fact, it would be appropriate for them at this time, with an unsubstantiated story, whether or not to publish at all. If we get a press inquiry about this and there is some thought that the girl has said that she wants to go to the press about it, I think we need to just play a very straight bat. And I've talked to the local authority um, people about this. I think we simply say that every time the school receives child protection disclosures, it refers them to the police and social services who have the responsibility of um, determining what to happen, what kind of investigation, if any, with to have, and all yes. the rest of it. I think the other thing I'd want to say, particularly to that um, low-life Richard Brock, is yes. that 
This is an underage student who's made this complaint. Um, her identity needs to be protected. And of course, if there is anything in her allegation and it later comes to court, they need to be very careful not to give it um, prejudicial coverage. Staff should be asked not to speculate. They should be told, if necessary, not to speak to journalists about what's going on and the responsibility for dealing with the journalists should be taken at the top level where the investigation is taking place. It should be made perfectly clear that what's happening is an investigation. It needs to be impressed upon the journalists that the matter is being dealt with seriously and thoroughly. When the inevitable phone call comes from our dogged journalist, the head gives a masterclass in tough stonewalling. Hello, Filippo here. Mr O'Hare, it's Richard Brock. From the Rock Record. Good morning. Oh, hello, Mr Brock. Hello. Mr O'Hare, we've had uh, a young female pupil come forward to us alleging sexual misconduct against one of your teachers. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about this? Um, a child protection disclosure has been made recently in school and it's being dealt with appropriately by police and social services with whom the school is cooperating fully. OK, so will the school be putting out a statement about of what's Of course happened? not. As you well aware, Mr Brock, child protection uh, matters are dealt with in the strictest confidence and I can't say anything other than we are entirely and fully following the procedures as advised by the police and social services. Uh, is the teacher being suspended? We have acted as directed by the police and social services and that's all I'm prepared to say. So the teacher may be being suspended? I'm not prepared to make any further comment, as this is now a matter being dealt with by the police and social services, should there be need to issue any further statements, they will come from the local authorities press office. OK, just a final thing then, have parents been told? We've followed the procedures as directed by the police and social services, I just refer you back to my first answer. OK, so the parents are aware of it? I refer you back to my first answer, and I do wish you'd stop treating me like a complete idiot, Mr Brock, by asking me the same questions over and over again. I'm being as full, frank and clear as I'm able to be, and I have nothing further to say. OK, thank you very much, Mr Hickey. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that is all we need. Not one to be easily put off, our journalist decides to visit the school and doorsteps a colleague of the accused teacher. Have you, have you heard about what he's, uh, what he's been up to? But what can a school do if staff or pupils are approached by the press? The first responsibility of every school leadership is to protect the interests of the children. And it is important that they be protected from harassment. So if there are journalists doorstepping outside the school premises, the school's writ, if you like, does run that far and it's proper to ask the journalists to leave in the interests of the pupils. While the head can insist that staff don't talk to the media, Lola has other ideas. Is this phone inquiries? I'd like another for Max Clifford. I think I've got a story that's worth a lot of money. It seems the girl may be trying to involve Max Clifford. Good gracious. Um, now, I hope that will come to nothing. Uh, mm. I think even the lowest of the red tops wouldn't pay for this story because I don't think their lawyers would let them run it right. because she's underage and it would be sub see anyway. But just in case, we will take exactly the same line. So our line's not changing. We're, we're playing the same. Our line right? not changing right. one little bit. It's probably the sort of thing that uh, young, young children are more likely to do in this day and age. But it shouldn't really make any difference to the way we're handling it because we'd still be viewing it as potentially a story that you know, may, may have some substance to it. It still be, need to be investigated in exactly the same way. If the story involves a serious allegation, don't go it alone. Don't talk to a journalist even if you know them personally. Turn to the experts, the police, your lawyer or local authority press officer. Let them handle attempts by others to manipulate the press. It's the summer term and just as Philip thinks he can relax, another of his young teachers decides to boost his income by writing a newspaper article about the temptations of schoolgirl lolitas. The style is somewhat overblown. 
Essentially, it is a big game hunt. The all-important preparation. The silent stalk. The crouch before the final pounce. And yes, they have bagged themselves a live teacher. Yeah, that seems to sum it up. Clues in the anonymous article clearly suggest that it was written by a teacher from the school. I am livid. I mean, the best you can think is that they think this is funny. The worst is that they actually know that uh, we're vulnerable and they can put a knife in. But we clearly need to do what we can, leadership team, to get our ears to the ground and, and see if we can find out who's written it. Uh, that's um, an excellent idea, but I think what you might also consider is getting in some of the technical ICT people. I have already got the IT people to do an immediate backup of everything on the system, and I will talk to them, I'll talk to the council's IT department, whether we'll need forensic IT people in as well, to do a word search to see if, if keywords from this article come up somewhere. If you have a teacher who thinks he's a journalist monkey, make it crystal clear that writing scurrilous articles could lead to him losing the day job. The Lolita article has reignited media interest in Rock High School, and the school is now attracting TV cameras. Failing school, Rock Secondary is about to go into special measures. This year, fewer than 10% of its pupils obtained five good GCSE results. Local shopkeepers are barricading their stores against some pupils, while other pupils are spending far too much time sleeping with their teachers to have time to shoplift. The school has now been marked for closure. Faced with a load of half-truths and total inaccuracies, Philip turns yet again to his trusty lawyer. Uh, as I understand it, you've got at least five factual errors in this story, so it rather looks as if you've been defamed. So you've got a legal remedy against that. The first step, of course, is to get it retracted, and you would probably be content with that if you get it sufficiently prominent. And we can demand a retraction, not just ask for one. Is the best way of dealing with this to ask you to approach um, the, the television company's lawyers? I think it is really, yes. I mean, it's, it's all very well to think you can self-help your way around these problems and I'm certainly not one for sending somebody to lawyers at the drop of a hat, but uh, dealing with something like this, it's probably better to get a lawyer's letter written to the editor. You'd need to be personally probably the claimant, as it were, in this, because it's very difficult to establish that you've been defamed as an organisation, but you've been defamed as the head. If a journalist gets his facts wrong and then fails to retract, get the lawyers in. Despite all Philip's hard work, Rock High School starts the summer term still undersubscribed and facing the threat of closure. Save Rock School! Save Rock School! Save this would cost his staff Save their jobs. So, how was your day? I've had better. <laughs> oh, come on. Rock Secondary's not that bad. I used to work at the school up the road. Right, and the head there insisted on us basically cheating by over-helping the kids with their GCSE coursework. I mean, in the end, we were virtually doing it for them. Well, it worked. I mean, nobody's talking about closing your old school down, are they? Mm. That's what the head's honesty did for him. It's not always the best policy, is it? No. Oh, well. The rumour about a nearby school massaging their results reaches the ears of our tireless reporter. Hello, Rock High School, Jeff Shepherd speaking. Like many seasoned journalists, he softens up his contact first. There's some better things today. I'm told that, uh, that Rock's done really well in the recent exam round. Oh, we have indeed. Yes, we're very pleased about those. That's good news. Nice to have some good news for a change. Hey, listen, just one other thing. The school up the road, which I know has a similar catchment area to yours, it seems to have done significantly better. Now, why would that be? They, they, they got better teachers if you've got worse teachers? Or what's going on here? Well, I can't really comment on, on the results of, uh, of our other schools. I mean, we, I try and concentrate on what we can do to improve things here, and um, we're certainly moving in the same direction. Between you and me then, Jeff, and if I'm, I'm going to sort of go off the record here and put the pen down, if I said to you that we've had rumours that there might be a bit of cheating going on at the other school to Good massage the results, does, it, does that come as news to you? 
It comes as complete news to me. I read about the massaging results on, in some of the national press and I hear about some of these items on TV, but it's not something which I've picked up locally at all. Do you think it's a possible explanation? <laughs> uh, I couldn't really comment on that, Richard. And uh, I think it would be improper for me to comment on what's happening at another school, to be honest with you. All right, Jeff, we'll stay in touch. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye-bye. Remember, journalists are rarely your best friends. Their loyalty is to their editor. Don't be lulled into unguarded chats, even when they appear to put their pen down. With a new school year about to begin, here are some tips for our team to ponder. The first is don't antagonise journalists. They're doing a job, they're trying to get at the facts. Help them to get at the facts. If the facts are not what they put to you, then make sure they're corrected. Second important point, tell the truth. It's important to tell the truth. There is no point in dissembling. You're going to be found out. Third important point, after investigation, the news turns out to be good. Make sure that the journalist is clearly told that the investigation results in good news and tell good news about the score. If the outcome is bad, make sure that you say to the journalists very clearly, this is what we're going to do to make things better. If you've got a crisis situation, it's good to make sure that you've got um, a, a credible spokesperson that's identified. Um, it's, it's always good to make sure that you put out consistent messages so you're not cutting across um, you know, other agencies if you're working with them. Uh, be proactive. Actually, don't just wait till bad stories are happening. Be proactive. Get out there with good stories. And um, remember that you, it's not that difficult to make a good friend of the local paper, so invite them in for the good things as well. Yeah.